Welcome to another episode of Nate and Tech. Today we're going to be covering episode three of my Plex server build. Uh, what we're going to be covering today is the, the software install for the Plex server. We're also going to be going over some of the naming conventions that we use for your movies and TV shows and stuff so that Plex will can pick up those episodes and catalog them correctly. And uh, the last thing we'll be covering is some of the things that you'll want to kind of think about before you build your Plex server, how you want to organize your files and your movies and your TV shows and stuff like that. Uh, and then some of the basic configuration uh, settings and how Plex works kind of in the background. So uh, let's get started. Before you install Plex and build your server, you're going to want to figure out how you want to catalog and organize your movies and TV shows. Me, I decided to break it up in about six different sections. Uh, I've got my regular HD movies. Um, uh, Non-kids movies would be the best way to explain this. So anything like PG-13 and up, uh, stuff that I wouldn't classify as kids movies. Uh, then I did regular TV shows, so non-kids TV shows. Then I did kids movies kids TV shows. I did a separate folder for holiday movies. So all my Christmas movies, some of my Thanksgiving movies. I think I might even have a couple Easter ones in there and stuff that we watch as a family every year during those holidays. So I keep those separate so I'm, they're not showing up on my list all the time. And then the last one I did was a, a sports folder, which I might sometimes add in some race car, you know, some of the, the races, Indy, uh, you know, Daytona, stuff like that. So. Um, that's how I organize mine. I have kids, so it, it's nice for me to kind of keep those things separate. Um, I originally only had it as, I didn't separate the, the, the kids shows and the TV shows. I just did all my TV shows and all in one, but it's kind of easier to have it too. So if my kids want to go watch something, they just go to kids TV shows and all of their stuff is there. So kind of think of how you want to do that because once once you start building your Plex server and you get the software installed and you build your uh, your catalog, you kind of, to, to redo that, you have to start over again. So sometimes it's just a little more work. So it's something to think about beforehand. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was the file naming convention. So I do all of my if I have a movie, I have it in a subfolder. So under HD movies, I have, you know, each movie. So let's say The Matrix, for example. The Matrix, and you'll have the year, which I believe was 1999. So it'll actually have The Matrix 1999 is the name of the folder, and then underneath that would be any of the video files, if there's multiples. Uh, I put the year in there because the software, Plex Server, will actually look at that, so it help it realize what movie it is. If there's a movie that has came out, you know, same name, but came out multiple years. It helps it sort and kind of pick through that. Uh, TV shows are a little bit easier, but some of them do have a year on them as well. For example, Doctor Who. The original Doctor Who series is just labeled Doctor Who, but the series that started in 2005, if you look uh, on IMDb, it's actually listed as Doctor Who and then in parentheses 2005. That's the series name. So you want to make sure that you name those correctly so that Plex or, you know, so your Plex server will actually catalog those and grab all of your, uh, all of the art and all of the information on who, who played in it and all that kind of stuff correctly. So definitely one thing to make sure you get correct. Underneath that folder for uh, whatever your TV show is, a lot of people uh, will do season folder so season one season two season three they'll break those up into each folder and then again underneath those we'll have all of your individual you know episode one episode two which generally people and i'll, I'll put across here on the bottom kind of a normal naming convention which will be the name of the show a dash uh, it'll be like season 01 so s01 e01 for episode 01 two three four whatever dash and then the the name of that episode, if they had names, uh, a lot of newer TV shows do. A lot of older ones don't, and it makes it a little harder to figure out what the episode is. Sometimes even after that, you'll have uh, like the quality. If it's HD or 
standard definition, 1080p, 720p, whatnot. So there's your normal naming convention. Like I said, I'll put that down here at the bottom so you guys can kind of have an example of that. Um, so those things that you want to make sure you get correct, it'll, it'll save you a lot of time in the long run when you're cataloging and organizing your files for those for those groups. So let's go ahead and kick over. I'll, I'll run you through the software install. The install is pretty simple. Configuration isn't too bad, but I'll show you some of the different things you want to look out for, uh, things you can turn on and off, and, and where stuff's at in the software. Uh, this, the one that I'll actually be showing is actually a test one that I'm creating just for this episode. It does not have um, the Plex Pass, so there's a couple other things in there that if you do want the Plex Pass, uh, definitely request that down below if you guys do want to see some of the different options that you can get in the Plex Pass, which opens up uh, some syncing options and things like that with your phones and um, Plex Cloud Sync, which we will get to after the software install. So I've already downloaded the Plex Media Server software here. So you just run the installer. I always check options to make sure there is anything special. This one you just run defaults, click install. If you're, you might need admin, click yes there, and it installs. Pretty simple on the install. A couple clicks and it's installed. This will run as a service. So if you go down to the bottom right hand corner of your screen, it will show up there and you can launch it from there. We can launch it from here for the first time. It does everything you do is from a web browser. This only runs the first time you start it for updating those libraries. If you do not have a Plex account already, it is gonna ask you to create one. So I'm just gonna use uh, the Nate and Tech email and we'll create an account. This is just for testing, to show you guys how everything, basically if you were doing it from the first time, how you would do it. Click create an account, save or never, whichever. So here you've got some options, uh, different type of media. I don't use their photo backup. So I always close that one. This is if you want to sign up for Plex Pass. We're not gonna worry about that right now. Those are your options down at the bottom. So you can name it what you want. And then you can check the box if you want to access your media from outside your home. This basically sets up a port on a machine. So I don't use photos, so we'll get rid of that. And I don't use music, I have Google Music. So you can delete that. You can add these back in later on. It says you can't be undone, but it's just because it's a library. So we're gonna add a library, and this is about the, your different options that you can set up different libraries. So we'll do one basic for movies. You can name it whatever you want. Like I said, you could have a kid's movies and your regular movies. Find your folder. We're just gonna do videos folder. Under advanced, this will give you some options if you want that to show up in the dashboard, if you want trailers to show up, um, for where it pulls its information from. So all these drop downs are where the cast is, your ratings if you want it, if you have a specific rating preference, uh, where it pulls its plots from, if you want to send anonymous data, one of these are all just check boxes. These are all preference stuff, really not gonna make a difference on the personal media is if this is for like home movies and stuff, it actually won't go out and try to find that on IMDb. So if you do have one for home movies, 
you know, that's where you would use that drop down. Now for TV shows, it's pretty much the same thing. Select a folder. I'm just gonna do a generic folder that I don't have anything set up on this one yet. Oh, let's see. Do, just my documents. Add, pretty much the same thing under advanced. Uh, a couple preferences if you wanna do it per show. If you want what order you want to do. Obviously, here's your personal media shows. If you have something for personal that's not on IMDb, you can do it there. Add, so there's our movies and TV shows. You can add as many as you want. So this file is actually the one I'm recording on right now. So here's your two, and this is where you'd add another one. There's that plus sign there. But here's your libraries. If you have multiple servers, that drop down. Go into settings here. Obviously your language. Quality, if you want to internet stream, you can adjust the quality. It will transcode to whatever. Subtitle size, you can change the, the, the subtitle size. All right, so here's some of your main, this is where your updates would be under general. We'll open up advanced. Let's see what else we got. Enable logging if you need any of that. Remote access. If you are gonna do this, uh, recommend changing the port, and configuring it manually in your router. If you guys have questions about that, definitely ask below. Optimized versions, we can go over later if you want. Let's see, under library, I check some of these depending on how often you want your library updated. I'm always adding files. Uh, so you can run partial scans or you can update uh, your library periodically. Or if it notices that there's a change detected, it will automatically update. You can change how many weeks your on deck folder or your on deck kind of shows you new new shows. It'll show you kind of what's what's new, and it'll keep a lot of that list uh, updated. You can pick how long you want. These are some of your transcoding background stuff. Transcoder quality. I love this one. Make my CPU hurt. Obviously, is going to higher you know higher quality. This is where uh, your you're gonna pick if you want subtitles. So if you prefer always wanting English, if you get movies that have other languages, it will automatically pick the English track to, or audio track and, and even the subtitle track to pull up. So it kind of pulls those by default. That way you don't have to manually do it. Most of these are defaults on the transcoder, languages, extras, TV DVR I've never used because most of my stuff's downloaded. This is where you'd add another user under my home. You can set up multiple users and friends you can share with friends, usually with their email address. You have them sign up with an email address and you can share. Devices, this will show any devices that are, have been used on your account. So your phones and whatnot. If you're syncing a file, it will show up here. That's, it would be all of your, like your cloud sync and whatnot. If anything is converting, it'll be under the conversion and now playing will show you if anybody's watching anything at the current time. I like to freak my wife out because I can pull this up from work and see what my daughter is watching and say, so how's that movie going? And she's like, how do you know that? You can sort these by date, by the time you added it. So if you want to look at what was the most recent, uh, you can just drop that and say by date added and it'll give you sorted by most recent to oldest. Here's your channel directory if you guys are interested in any live channels. Not too much of you know your main what you would pay for channels, but it does have you know your CNN, Comedy Central. It's got a lot of some live stuff that you can watch, but not not really full uh, live channels like what you would pay for with you know YouTube TV or Sling TV and whatnot. Now that we've installed the Plex server and we've gone through some of the naming convention stuff, the last thing I wanted to talk about is some other options for um, Plex servers. So there's three types of Plex servers you can run if you have a Plex Pass. So these are two of these, or you have to have a Plex Pass to do it, which is $4.99 a month, or you can 
get uh, other plans, I think yearly and then a lifetime. And those, those vary sometimes you can catch them on deals. So the first one is just your normal Plex server that runs locally and you can also use your own internet to, to share out. So if you, if you have a decent internet, you can you know, watch it from work or friend's house. If you're out and about, you can, you can connect your own server remotely and, and use your upload data to, to watch movies or uh, TV shows. The, the next one that they have is called, it's just called Plex Cloud. And the way it works is you put files, manually upload files to a folder on Google Drive or Dropbox. There's a couple other ones that are available as well. Uh, and it works like basically like Plex is in, the, your server is actually in the cloud. Uh, it uses the cloud storage's servers to do all the transcoding, to do all of the processing power. So it's really, it's a Plex server on its own separate from your server. Um, and uses their data, you know, you, just like you're downloading from your, your Google Drive account. So it doesn't actually talk to your server, I think hardly at all. It might for the initial connection, but that's about it. Uh, the third one is Plex Cloud Sync. And I always get these ones confused because the names are so close. Um, Cloud Sync is just like you're, if you're syncing, you know, a, a TV show to your phone, you can say, I want the last three episodes of unwatched episodes synced to the cloud. So if you don't have the storage on your phone, you can sync that to the cloud and then watch it from the cloud, but it's all managed by your Plex server. So it still doesn't, it doesn't use your Plex server to stream, but it does upload the files to the cloud and then you can watch it from there just about anywhere, especially if you don't have enough upload data or upload speed to to stream, but you can upload them overnight or whatnot. So those are the three types. Uh, like I said, the two of them, the Plex Cloud, both of the Plex Cloud ones, you have to have a Plex Pass for, but they're really nice to have, especially if you have family or friends that you wanna share some of those files with, you can upload them one or the other and share those and allow your families and friends to, to access those without affecting your upload data for streaming. So in a nutshell, that's, that's really Plex, it's very simple. It does have a lot of powerful things, a lot of things you can get into, but for the most part, uh, you've got some, you basically run the defaults for the most part, uh, besides a couple of recommendations that I've done to, to change for security and, and whatnot. But if you guys have any more questions, I will love to make another episode and answer some of the questions you guys have. Just put them below and uh, we'll see you next time.